Welcome to the Uncle Hack Podcast, where dudes pretty much just talk dude shit. Wow. We are back to, uh, well, no, I just, I, I guess it's only been a week, one week without a podcast, and I'm even getting a couple comments, well, where's the podcast this week? Well, if you were a fan, if you were a fan, if you listened to the show every week, you would know that I took a little time off. I went out and had a good time in the mountains snowboarding, then we had shows, and now I'm back refreshed, feeling good. Uh, before we get into the show, let's let's promote ourselves a little bit here, okay? January 20th, that's right, this Friday, I put the fucking title on the line, baby, against Charles Haycock. <sighs> he wants to sniff at the champ. He wants to tangle with the toads, as they say in the business, I believe. Uh, so yes, uh, this, this Friday in Calgary, the roast battle is going down. <sighs> January 21st, Rocky Mountain House. January 28th, Camrose, Alberta. February 2nd, Kindersley, Saskatchewan. February 3rd, Provost, Alberta. February 4th, Hannah, Alberta. February 10th, Drumheller, Alberta. February 17th, Grand Forks, British Columbia. Good news. This year, we are heading out east. That's right. I am finally heading out east with our stand-up. And when I say east, I mean east. We're going east, baby. I'm talking Ontario. I'm not just saying like, uh, we're going east, so we're going to Saskatchewan. I wish. But unfortunately, unfortunately, provinces exist past Manitoba. So... I have to go show my face, apparently. Wow. <laughs> you know, I got to go out. I got to go out and remind places like New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, Newfoundland, especially, that they are a bunch of giant pussies. Throughout COVID, what did you do? You stuck your little thumb in your pussy and be like, Daddy, can you help me? Now, now, now the fucking Alberta rattlesnake. The three musty queers have to head out there and remind you guys how big of a fucking, how big of pussies you are. Sorry, English, bad. Let's try it out. How big of pussies you are out there. That's right. You like to, you like to come out here. You like to come out to Alberta. Tell everybody, let's so great out on the rock. Oh yeah. Is it? Is it? You rule following bunch of fucking fart sniffs out there. Jesus Christ. Let me get, did you? How many hall monitors does it take to tank a province? I don't know. Check the population out east of Canada, Jamie. What a bunch of losers. <laughs> and I can't wait to go out there and sling my guns in those pathetic provinces. Jesus Christ. No need... They don't need uh, bottom surgery out there. All the men are actually women out there. They're so, they got a little spooked when the government was like, we might take away your fucking check, huh? Here's your little pokey check and then some. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> their Audi turned into an innie with a government check. So we got to go out there and straighten that out. So yes, we are heading out east uh, this year. Uh, the dates aren't live yet, so I'm not going to release them, but we do have some dates set in stone and we'll be heading out that way. <sighs> Can't believe I'm the one that has to go out there and remind everybody how big of a fucking, Ugh. it is my job though. You know what? It is my job at the end of the day. I signed up for this, right? I didn't, I didn't necessarily want to do it. It was just something I had to do, you know, and, uh, when you got to hear all these fucking silly noofies come out to Alberta, I mean, well, hey, hey, you wouldn't believe how great it is out there. Then why don't you go back? You know, I got to go full Ralph Klein for a minute and I got to do a little province tour and remind, uh, you know, oh, Alberta didn't follow the rules. You're damn right we didn't. 
because the rules are meant to suck my ass. That's what they're meant for, you silly bitches. Jesus Christ, what the hell's wrong with you? The government knows what's best for me. Mm. That's why you're... That's why your son is your daughter now. <laughs> this is Right Wing Radio, brought to you by Uncle Hack. Anyways, uh, big episode. Lots of hate mail. God, God bless you. I thought everybody was happy over the holidays. I thought I solved the world's problems. Then I get called out because I'm bitching. No, 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 no. I would, I, I, do I bitch? Of course, all the time. You know damn well on this show that I love to bitch. I love to bitch on this show. It's, something, it's one of my favorite things to do. One of my favorite things to do. Some would even mistake. If I sounded like I learned English on a scratched Rosetta Stone uh, CD, you would think with the amount of bitching that I do, that I was from the East Coast, right? You would. <laughs> Sound like a scratch CD teaching you English. Jesus Christ. But I didn't, all right? No, it's good. Uh, lots of hate mail. So we, uh, we're going to sift through a few of them that I got, and then we got some for next week just in case somebody doesn't send any in. You know, we, we got a backlog, baby. It feels good. It feels good that there's some hate in the hearts out there. You know, I was getting worried. I was, I thought all the, all the world's problems have been solved with this podcast, you know, with the hundreds of listens that it gets, it's, it's echoing across the lands and it's solved all the issues. All the angry people out there were able to write into the show, get it off their chest. Boom. All the world's problems solved, right? All the drug addicts clean their act up, act up. Jesus Christ, maybe don't take a week off next time. You know, we were hitting a stride. And then you had to go and fuck that all up by taking a week off and doing your own thing like an asshole. And here we sit before you fucking mumbling words. We were we were on a we were on a new roll. We were on a new roll. And then guess what? We come back here and pff, thumb up my ass. I'm riding pokey over there talking about how great the rock is. Unreal. And I, when I say The Rock, I don't mean like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. No, I'm talking about a, a fucking cliff, uh, a cliff off the Atlantic Ocean. That's what I'm talking about. Unreal. <laughs> Holy shit. No, we've got major issues to cover. You know what? I started off on the wrong foot. I shouldn't have done that. You know, I'm trying to be a new person this year. I'm trying to, you know... I'm trying to become a, the man that I was meant to be, the feminist that I needed to be, you know. I'm trying to become that one that uh, looks at as women as equal. I'm really putting my best foot forward to do so, you know. I got trapped in the Andrew Tate algorithm, and thankfully, you know, he ate a pizza apparently from a Romanian place after, and, and then put it up that he was eating Romanian pizza after he tweeted Greta Thunberg, and then uh, she gave the most uh, devastating blow to herself by admitting that she has a penis, which landed Andrew Tate in jail. After Andrew Tate got Greta Thunberg to admit that she's transgender, he is now in jail. That's where we're at in the world, okay? She comes out and says, you can email me at smalldickenergy at fucking whatever my, ga my gap is gone, dot com. I don't know the website host, but I know that she put small dick energy, which is, you know, what do they say? Oversized clit is an undersized dick. I believe that's the saying. Regardless, welcome to the dark side. Welcome to being a man, Greta. Uh, unfortunately, being a man and just switching over like that will not cure autism. So you are, you will be stuck with that, unfortunately. Not our problem, right? I'm not going to sit here and, you know, there are artistic men out there. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying just the, the crossover, just because you make the jump, just because you, uh, you leaped over a birth canal and now you got, you got a hog instead, doesn't mean that you just, all these, you know, these diseases that you contracted, these mental problems that you absorbed in the womb can just dissipate doesn't happen like that. 
But like I was saying, my algorithm was getting out of control. I was always Andrew Tate and telling me to go and just be- beat the shit out of a store clerk if she's a female. She asked if I would you like ba- would you like bags today? I'm like yeah, I would, so I can bag your face while I smash it in with the front end of my Dodge Ram. How does that sound? How would you like to have a Chevy logo imprinted on your forehead? Don't ever ask me a question again, woman. You know the answer. You know, I was getting too ramp, ramped up. Way too much misogyny in the, in, the, in the news feeds, but I've turned over a new leaf. I'm starting to see things differently now, right? I'm starting to look at women as the beautiful creatures that they, as they are, you know? And it, it took me some time, you know, this is the problem with the internet, you know, it, it gets a grip on you. All of a sudden you're watching Andrew Tate and you and I'm out boxing women in parking lots, in malls across the fucking province. It's, it's incredible what it does. It just melts your brain. You start listening to this guy and I'm just seeing women at a bus stop and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, you know, it'd be better if I ran you over. You know, I'm honking the horn, telling the guys to get out of the way. Get out of the way. Let me run this whore over. And it took him being jailed. Now he's, you know, not putting out any new content. And I can't look at these other guys like that Sneeko guy. I can't look at him and respect him. You know, I can't look at the knockoff. Nobody's ever went into the dollar store and, and then bought the knockoff toy and been like, this is better than the real thing. No. No, 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 no. You know, we're talking about one man was a kickboxing champ and the other one's putting out fucking pictures of himself looking like he, he got beat up. He went to a makeup artist to, to look like he got beat up. It's not the same. You know what I mean? It's not the same. It's like, uh, I remember when I was a kid, this is the only comparison I can think of, uh, uh, you know, I was a Snoop Dogg fan, but I didn't own any Snoop Dogg CDs. This is prior to the internet where I could just go and download the song that I wanted and put it on like a fucking, not even, I didn't have a, a phone. I didn't have a phone that I could just stream it on, right? This didn't exist back then. And uh, I really liked that song, Gin and Juice. And there were some similar lyrics in a Brand Van 3000 song. So I would just listen to those lyrics and just imagine that, uh, that, that, that I was listening to Gin and Juice by Snoop Dogg, but instead it's not, it's not even close to the song that I want, right? I had to imagine. And it was such a bummer where, where you know, this is like if I sat here and started listening to Sneeko, all the Sneeko clips, and if you're not familiar with him, he's basically like, he's like an Andrew Tate apprentice, right? Loves to go on, yell at women. And so my misogyny is now left that I'm not getting fresh clips of my dog, you know, RIP, RIP my masculinity too. But I have, this is going somewhere. Don't worry. Time for a little ad read. Okay. DangerCatShop.com for all your ticket needs, all the dates that I read earlier in the episode. That's right. You can get tickets to those shows. Uh, right now, if you are looking to come to any of our shows, I suggest getting tickets as soon as possible as we are selling out more and more shows uh, faster than ever, if I'm being honest. Um, so if, if you are wanting to get into our shows, uh, I, I, all I can say is get tickets as soon as possible. Uh, as, uh, clothing. If you would like any t-shirts or uh, merchandise, please visit DangerCatShop.com. Use the promo code PODCAST69 and you will get 15% off your order today. All Danger Catch t-shirts. Well, we're going to be releasing some new stuff here in the future right away. We're working on some new designs as I'm speaking right now and they are fucking pretty sick. I am I am stoked on them. Uh, anyways, uh, whatever. Patreon.com slash DangerCat69 for extra episodes of this podcast in video and audio format. Isn't that fun? You uh, love this podcast? You like listening to it? You love listening to this retard ramble? Of course you do. Well, maybe. I don't know. Maybe you love just uh, watching somebody struggle. That's uh, also very, very, very lovely of you. And I cannot take that away from you. 
Uh, but you can get a extra episode and the one that you're listening to right now earlier than everybody else. If 48 hours exactly. So the episode that you're listening to right now is available uh, every week, Tuesday at 3 p.m. And you have an extra episode waiting for you Thursday at 3 p.m. So that's two episodes every week that you can get of this podcast. Plus, uh, like we said, Roast Battles coming up this weekend. And if you want to review all old footage of Roast Battles, they are available on our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash DangerCat69. Uh, th- th- those are the only two pieces of content that I'll ever charge for is Roast Battles and an extra uh, piece or uh, extra podcast every week. And cause I'm kind, I'm like, I'm like Santa Claus. I'm always just giving and giving and giving. And now, you know, the bill collector's coming and I'm like, dude, can you just give me a little bit? Can you break up, break up. Can you break some, uh, spread some cheese on this bro cracker? Anyways, back to the episode. A lot of, a lot of fellows would be like, what happened to him? You know? But I felt, you know, I, I, I've now seen after a few news articles have come out that women we're going to, this is a pro woman, uh, episode. We, we normally don't do these, which is fun, right? This is, this is going to be fun for all of us. And, and, you know, like as, uh, Andrew Tate got locked in prison and I found myself seeing more feminist content because they were able to produce more than him. And now it's entered my algorithm. I'm like, oh my God, yes, no, I see the use for women. And, uh, you know what, uh, one of those women was in is in Grand Prairie, you know, and and I think it's time I take a step back and I start celebrating the sacrifice that some of these females do to be public servants in uh, the industries like uh, medical, policing, security. You know, the, I have to take a step back and I got to see the bigger picture. So um, <clears throat> the first woman I would like to celebrate. The first woman that I feel deserves the attention from this podcast uh, is all the way in Grand Prairie. And uh, the headline reads, Grand Prairie doctor suspended from practice by CPSA Tribunal for Sexual Abuse. Now, see now, this is why I don't trust the media. This is why I don't trust the media. This is why you shouldn't trust the media. Let's get into the article. Adam Lachazzi you know, he wrote this article with CTV News Edmonton digital producer. I think he's a bit of a cuck for doing this. You know, this woman should be celebrated. Instead, he demonizes her. This is a public servant. She's out there giving the, the, the graces of her skills that she spent many years inside of a university to learn and give back to the community. And those skills were giving hand jobs in library bathrooms. A Grand Prairie family, now here's the article. A Grand Prairie family doctor has been suspended from practice after a college of physicians and surgeons of Alberta hearing found she had a relationship relationship with a paraplegic patient constitch... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, Constituting sexual abuse. So she can't relieve someone with uh, with that's that's a uh, paraplegic without it being sexual abuse. This is the world we live. See, women have it harder than men. This is why I'm a feminist today. On Friday, the college said that uh, Brian, Dr. Sorry, excuse me, Dr. Brianne Hudson's permit to practice has been suspended as of January 9th, 2023. She was found guilty on two uh, CPSA charges of having a sexual relationship with a patient between August 2019 and December 2019 and subsequently providing false information on her renewal with a uh, form with the college. According to hearing documents, Hudson had a broad scope of practice, including maintaining her family clinic, part-time work at a local, local emergency room, and helping patients in long-term care. Wow. She does all that. She does all that. Jerks off one paraplegic. Did see, maybe we are an ableist society. Now I get where all this stems from. 
one lady jerks off one paraplegic and then all of a sudden, you know, you build a thousand bridges and suck one cock and everybody thinks you're a cocksucker. Unreal. This is why I'm a feminist today. Keep that in mind. Just for today. Or until Andrew Tate gets released from a Romanian prison. And I see him eating more Romanian pizza. And we all know what pizza means around here, don't we? Ah, the QAnon people getting all jacked. It was it cheese pizza? Got a cheese, a sex trafficker eating cheese pizza? Hmm. Sneaky, sneaky. Unnamed in the proceedings, Hudson met patient X during her residency in 2011, who had made a positive impression on her. That was a fucking, what is that, code for jizz? (laughs) (laughs) Got him. She then met him again in 2016 when the patient, who was paraplegic after a workplace accident, regularly visited the hospital due to an opioid addiction. Ooh. The plot thickens. Oh. Oh, okay. Classic drug. Have you ever had, you know, it's not an addiction until you've ate pussy for it. You know? If his hog doesn't work, she forced him to eat pussy to get some I hope you, oh my God, Grand Prairie, you fucking succulent town of success. Two years later, Hudson took over the patient's care at the hospital and learned he was incarcerated, incarcerated, facing two to five years. Oh my. She said she became concerned about patient X life if he was sentenced to incarceration. The tribunal documents read, adding she suggested they needed legal counsel, paid their cash bail, and acted as a liaison between them and their lawyer. In return, the patient provided her with a gift, the documents revealed, at which point she began to develop feelings. Hudson offered the patient a place to stay instead of the shelter. By August 2019... The relationship became sexual. At which point she was attending professional boundary courses after supervisors and the college already noted concerns. Always putting your nose in somebody else's. So what? The lady wanted to suck a little hog, you know? She's giving opioids to the fucking paraplegic to get her pussy ate. I don't see an issue with this. You got to pay back that cash bail somehow. Everybody see now maybe a little bit of the feminism is leaving my body. Disgusting of me. Mm. Oh boy. Hudson then signed an agreement with the college in February 2020 that placed conditions on her practice until the hearing and complaint process was settled. Complaining. Imagine, imagine being uh, an adult and complaining about where you uh, what you let in your pussy about uh, uh, complaining about what another person lets in their pussy right you know what I mean imagine that have we have we got there is that where we are at as people like we just sit around and we're like ah Bunch of miserable cocksuckers, you know. Oh, I can't believe Brienne's over here fucking a paraplegic and I can't even get my fu- husband to look at it. Fucking complaining. This is what I, this is why I'm a feminist now because I believe in her right to have sex with the man that she wishes, right? This is why I'm fighting for the female body. To be used in any way that they wish, right? I'm a more I'm more feminist than the actual feminists, you know. The feminists are yelling at other f- fucking women, being like, "You can't put your pussy pics online because men buy them. Men buy those pussy pics, you know." And here I am, the true rooted, like second generation feminist. Telling everybody that, yes, I feel that, you know, if you were a true feminist and you were fighting for the real cause that I believe in, you wouldn't charge for those pussy pics. You'd make sure that they were everywhere on the internet. You know, you wouldn't charge for it. No, that's, 
That's that's capitalism. And you know what capitalism is deeply enrooted in? White supremacy. And we don't want that, do we? We don't want that. Why would we want more white supremacy? So the only way we can combat something deeply rooted and ingrained in our society, like white supremacy, and and, and it's 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 uh, constant battle on, on on becoming more familiar with those inside our households, right? And and, and I truly believe is just free pussy pics on the internet. You know, I don't think that, that, but listen, pussy pics and a paywall in front of them, you know, that, like I said, that's that, that again is straying away from the true uh, ideologies that, that we believe in as feminists, right? We don't want to be a part of a capitalistic fucking society that white men created. Do we want to be a part of that, ladies? Do we really want to be a part of that? No. That's why making sure that you put your pussy pics out there for free is the most feminist thing you could do. And that's a great way to take down the patriarchy, you know? How many years have men been sending free dick pics, you know? Free unwanted dick pics. Now, maybe it's time the ladies start ambushing these assholes you don't you think? Don't you think it's time that you start ambushing cell phones all across the lands with unsolicited pussy pics? Exactly like the Ukrainians are doing to the Russians, you know? And when all else fails, we'll just beg for more aid, you know, because we're women and, and we'll use, well, we, I guess, uh, as a feminist, I am speaking uh, on behalf, you know, and championing championing all these ideo ideologies of the feminist manifesto, you know. I'm fighting hard as a feminist, that is. No other reason why that unsolicited pussy pics should not be a thing of the future. This paywall stuff, capitalism, ugh, am I right? Am I right, fellow comrades? Jesus. Anyways. Uh, <clears throat> those included having a chaperone present for all patient visits, telephone calls, and having another physician present in any clinical practice. See, it's funny how... You know, she develops feelings for like one person, right? De develops feelings for one person. And <clears throat> it's like when, you know, when gay first kind of like come, it came out and then like, you know, a few people came out and said that they were gay. And then everybody like, you know, then all of a sudden a bunch of fucking straight dudes were like, I don't want to be around that gay guy. He might want to fuck me. And it's like, listen, your wife doesn't even want to fuck you. All right, calm down. You are not the fucking Brad Pitt you think you are. You need to buckle down to have a long, hard look in the mirror and a, and a reality check is needed. Gay men uh, fuck other gorgeous gay men. You know what I mean? Like, you know, your wife, you know when your wife is like sitting there and she's like, oh, look at this hunk. And you're like, fuck it. Now we've gotten so far down the path that we're like, that guy is gay. You know, our gaydar is on. We know now, like, that guy ain't interested in me. You know, that guy, two gorgeous, great looking fellas together, right? They ain't looking at old fat ass shoveling Doritos down his, I don't want to fucking, that guy better not want to fuck, you better get him away, you might try and fuck me. The only thing you're fucking is retarded. You know, and then they get like, oh, we, we better make sure there's a chaperone present or else she's going to suck off everybody. No, nah, she found one guy. One guy started slobbing his knob and then all of a sudden, the wow, well, we, we better make sure that she doesn't fucking get too horny in there. What if she wants to fuck somebody else? Let her do it. It's for science. Unreal. 
This is, this is what I mean. The feminism in me. She wants to sit in there and give hand jobs in a waiting room. Why don't you let her? Relieve a little stress. Sometimes it is a stressful experience to go inside some of these clinics and uh, receive horrible news. And I'll tell you what would really uh, uh, lighten the blow is a blown job. <laughs> I am killing today. <laughs> Holy Christ. All right. Fucking pipe it. Joke's over. After hearings were held in February and April last year, the college found Hudson's relationship with the patient amounted to sexual abuse under the Health Professions Act and that her conduct was unprofessional and a gross failure of professional judgment. Well, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with old paraplegic over there. I'm going to go with, he's probably sitting there thinking to himself, hmm, this ain't so bad after, I don't mind this one bit. I don't think that this is all that bad. This ain't sexual abuse. In fact, I wish you would abuse me a little more. I'd come harder. Put a telephone wire around my neck and choke me. Tell me I've been a bad little legless man. Jesus Christ. All these fucking suit dummies always stepping on everybody's good time. You know what I mean? Fucking disgust me. Disgust me. So for that, you know, that's why we're here. The college says Hudson is now responsible for taking reasonable steps to connect patients in an active or an acute care with an another health care provider. Oh, boy. Bad, bad, bad. She took advantage of an extremely vulnerable, disabled, opioid-dependent individual who was her patient. I, as a, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not be a feminist for a second. As a man, as a man, I would say that's just a lady taking care of me. But if you want to call it sexual abuse, then I'll fucking by all means call it what you want as long as, as, long as I'm catching a nut. You know what I'm saying? That is wonderful. Now, now we celebrate another fucking great female. In <laughs> Now, this one went a little more viral. You've probably heard of this one. You've probably seen some shit about it. Okay, so officer fired in uh, Tennessee police sex scandal, and she had wild affairs with six colleagues. So now Dr. Brianne... What is it with these bird mouth bitches that are always the freaks? What is with that? You know, you wouldn't look at her. Isn't that something? You know, when you're walking down the street and you see a 12 and you you envision like, you know, obviously like the, uh, the, the late, you know, you get the dolled up ladies and porn and then like those are like, that's like the 1% and they just seem to found the one profession that's going to, you know, take them away. But the actual like freaks, the sex fucking addicts are never what you expect out in the streets, right? Those are those, but those ladies that are getting paid to fuck like that too. So these this chick's just doing it out of her own sexual desires. And inside our head, we like to believe that porn stars actually exist in real life, but they 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 do, but they just don't look like them, right? We have it inside our head that you know you look at the the 12 that's uh, working at Sephora and you just went in there and you're like, I bet she fucks like a minx. But in reality, it's just like you'd have a better time just, you know, fucking a towel, right? A towel has more reflexes than some of these ladies out there in the sheets. And I'm not taking a dig at anybody because obviously today I am a feminist and I'm talking about from the viewpoint as a feminist. And I think it's deeply ingrained in misogynistic views that men are out here viewing women like this, you know, they're bypassing women like this, that look like this, that look like, you know, they spent a few years in a band camp and, and we look past them and we don't allow them to be the sexual freaks that they want to be, right? We just, men wish that they, they just looked a little different. And I find that disgusting. I can't believe you guys out there are like that, you know? She fucked the whole police force. 
Unreal. Isn't that crazy? Listen to the article. We can do that. Officer fired in a Tennessee police sex scandal and she had wild affairs with six colleagues. Huh. Police okay. force numbers in one Tennessee city have shrunk recently after several of its members were either fired or suspended following an internal sex scandal. Isn't that lovely? In December 2022, a human resources investigation of the sketchy goings-on of the Laverne Police Department revealed one officer, May Jen Hall, had several intimate relations with her colleagues. This included, but was not limited to, some very passionate happenings even on the job. Passionate happenings. See how the language changed between the two? Uh, the other one was sexual abuse because he was an opioid addict about to be incarcerated. And now this one was just passionate happenings. You know, getting sucked off in a squad car while you're on shift is just a passionate happening. You know, it, it uh, even on the job, it's just a passionate happening. Fucked, got skull fucked in a squad car. Oh, no, 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 no. It's a passionate happening. See, this is, this is feminism. This is the feminism I'm talking about. CTV News, see, that's, just, again, this is Narcity out of uh, Texas, I believe. This is Narcity out of Texas on this article right here. The one that we just uh, uh, read is from CTV News. And that's what I mean when um, Canada is always six years behind everybody. Uh, especially America. Canada is six years behind America. See, we are still stuck in those misogynistic ways of the early 2000s, right? The early 2010s. We haven't quite got in into the 2020s quite yet. We don't quite understand how it operates up here. See, a female can do no wrong. And we, we as Canadians, are so fucking far behind the eight ball that we're considering or even reporting let's go with that let's we're reporting <clears throat> that a woman who took care of a man sexual abuse where right here it was just a passionate happening it's disgusting that canada is still there's so far behind everybody isn't that isn't that disgusting the report graphically describes these findings, like Hall sending nude photos to co-workers, having threesomes with married co-workers, and participating in a topless girls gone wild hot tub party with the team. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Participating in a topless girls gone wild hot tub party with the team. Co-ed sports, are they all like that too? Like Hull sending nude photos to co-workers, having threesomes with married co-workers. They're, you're all for, like, they haven't quite reported this yet in it. She's married, keep in mind. She is married. Now, does that get, uh, does that get reported in here? Now, five officers have been fired and three were suspended for being involved, which Fox Nashville revealed dropped force numbers down by an entire 12%. <laughs> she fucked them out of a job, taking down the patriarchy. You know what? Sometimes you got to put your pussy, per pussy first to take down the patriarchy, and this woman found that out right away. What a true warrior. What a true comrade for the movement. You know what? Now, it's, now there's five men... Six men? Eight? How many Chief Vacan Bay? Six? Six men are out of a job? Six men are out of a job because of one woman. And to that we say... Pussy power. Pussy pussy power. Pussy power. Pussy pussy power. Hall was, of course, fired from her job as well. For the past two weeks... Talk about falling on your sword, right? Talk about diving on a grenade for feminism. God. What an angel. What an angel. 
What a, you know, what a selfless human being to put her pussy first, all in the name of feminism. See, this is, like I said, you know, we're, we've been flip-flopping back and forth. That's just because of my internalized misogyny from, uh, you know, the algorithms feeding me all that bullshit for so long. And that my balls have now shriveled up inside of my stomach. And I, I now look at this as a powerful leader right here. Leading with her pussy, of course. But she's doing what most women are intimidated to do, to get out there and be the woman that they were meant to be, you know, to uh, lead by example. And the, and the example is the sample of this pussy. The misconduct has taken social media by storm, earning all types of reactions. A lot of people are commenting on every post on the LVPD's Facebook to share their jokes about the scandal, even if the post has nothing to do with Hall or any of the officers involved. Some are even asking if the squad is currently hiring. Tick. <laughs> first, first order of business. Before I even crack a joke, I was just wondering if you're possibly looking for an extra officer. Seems you have six positions opening, and she's given more than six, if you know what I mean. Ha! <laughs> we'll hit her with an Eiffel Tower. A tower of power. You know, the police force lost six positions, but she, she's been known to cover all of them. <laughs> Scotty's on fire! Holy shit. TikToker Christian Tory. Get out of here with your laughter. You fucking swines. He joked in his viral clip with over 400k views that the department definitely knew how to work as a team. <laughs> police departments in Tennessee definitely know how to work as a team. Man, police officer, medium skin tone, police car rolling on the floor laughing. Hashtag police, hashtag joke, hashtag fake gun, hashtag police training, hashtag oh FYP, hashtag God. relatable, hashtag officer, hashtag This is why the robots can't take over. What the hell was that? Oh my sweet Jesus. This is the last. You know what? What's worse, my reading or this robot? You know, like sitting there, me fumbling over words or this guy being like, hashtag fucking gunshot, hashtag, hashtag BLM, hashtag, hashtag fucking blue lives matter, hashtag fucking back shots only. <laughs> back shots, eh? you know what I mean? Uh, most, most cops shoot a uh, black man in the back, but when you're a female white officer, you just take back shots from blacks. I'm writing on the fly today, baby. If I were her, I would just move to a new country at this point, one TikToker commented, referring to Hall. One tweet with 15.2 million views and over 6,000 retweets, however. Dude, the internet can just ruin a life, hey? If I'm her, I'd take a career in porn. Why wouldn't you at this point? What else do you have left to lose? The whole world knows you're a whore. You might as well lean into it. You know, that's why I respect the uh, trampede, you know what I mean? She got busted having a threesome. I don't know if you guys recall this, but uh, a few years back, a woman, uh, what was her name? Uh, Alex, Alexis Fruling. Alexis Fruling got busted having a, a threesome. She got Eiffel Towered in a back alley, right? And uh, the, the, the post went viral. It took off on Reddit and then it just like spiraled exactly like this right here. Now the whole internet knows she's a whore. So instead of like trying to defend herself, right, she just leaned into it. So I think that right here, this woman has an opportunity now to probably like make enough money. Can you imagine like, think about that. We are a twisted society. It's like when that bad baby decided to put out an OnlyFans, she made like a million dollars in 24 hours. You don't think that as this story is pumping, if she decided to start an OnlyFans right now, she already lost her job. Who gives a shit? Not fucking police officer my ass. If I'm her, I would get a fake cop uniform 
and reenact some of those. The, this is where I got to step in and be the feminist agent for the, these people. Yeah, I know earlier we were like, oh, fuck, so put, put out the free pussy pics. No, that's just an ambush, you know, like the, those are landmines uh, to just trap everybody. See, there's method to my madness. Uh, unsolicited pussy pics. Oh, so that way the male brain's just constantly thinking about it. And then when something like this, a viral story pops up like this, I step in and be like, you know what we got to do, right? We got to just reenact all the things that you did as a police officer. There's no going back from here. Your husband's already been cocked by the whole fuck. You know, he's uh, he already looks like an idiot uh, staying with you. So, I mean, like, what what do we do here? You know, you might as well get into porn. Clearly, he's okay with it. Clearly, we don't care because as feminists, we don't listen to a man. So, uh, just hop underneath my wing and we're going to start an OnlyFans for you. I bet you, do you think she could break the record of bad baby? I bet you she could put up uh, close enough numbers. We're almost done this article. But I, I guarantee you, that's the only road that you can take from here on out. No. What? You want to be, you imagine that? You want to be fucking bagging groceries or being a receptionist at a fucking hotel and then you're recognized from this and be like, hey, what do you say? We go to the broom club. <laughs> no, 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 no. Lean into it. Make your dough. Cash in. You're getting free press off all these retards. You might as well cash the fuck in. You, you All you got to do is like fucking take one photo with your titties out of like one of them gay uh, gay cop uniforms from like a sex shop. You know what I mean? Like, ooh, so we want to do a little role play tonight. So I dressed my wife up as a police officer and I'm going to beat her black and blue with this baton. Yeah. Well, right here. That's all you need. In fact, if you have an extra uniform of that goddamn police uh, department, you might as well make a mockery of the whole thing. You've made a mockery of yourself. Lean into it. Go with it. It only makes sense at this point. You know what I mean? I get you don't even probably got to get piped out. I mean, it'd probably help. You'd probably make three times as much, but go with it. Christ, you were sucking off your fellow officers for free. What's wrong with you? Said the cops were going to hell for their relations with Hall. Another Twitter user responded with a Thanos-style meme of Hall wearing an infinity gauntlet, with each stone being an officer she was found to be having an affair with. Nice. However, it seems that her husband Jedediah Hall, a park ranger and the son of a pastor, is standing by her. What? Pardon me? Repeat yourself, robot. Her. The pair, according to the de her, Daya Hall, it seems... However, it seems that her husband Jedediah Hall, a park Jebediah. ranger, son of a <laughs> a park ranger, a park a park ranger. Oh boy, talk about never mind. So stupid, you know. Your wife is an actual cop, and you're a park ranger. You're telling people to pick up their garbage down at the local provincial park, and be like, "Hey, hey, excuse me, you got to do that." Hey, excuse me. Where she's like, freeze, show me your black dick. Pastor is standing by her. Oh, he stands beside her, all right. Eh? If I can, he even stands beside her as she's getting piped down. What a little cock. Hey. The pair, according to the Daily Mail, have been sweethearts since their college days before tying the knot in November 2018. I don't know how he's doing it. He's more of a man than I am, but he's more of a man. Ay, ay, ay. Trying to salvage his marriage, Jedediah's boss, Coffee County Sheriff Chad Parton, told DailyMail.com. I don't want to discuss it, I'm just going to move on and live my life, she told the outlet when they tracked her down in the aftermath of the investigation. <laughs> We're keeping an eye out on further developments in this case, but let us know your thoughts in the comments. Yeah, that's enough. There you have it. Our feminists are rising above all these uh, allegations... They're doing their best. They, uh, they are, you know, they're, they're, they're true to their words. They're true to themselves. My God, I can't, what am I doing?
But guess what? It is time for everybody's favorite portion of the show. That's right. All I had to do was bitch a little bit. And guess what? People came through with some hate mail. Apparently, I didn't solve it all. Apparently, I'm a liar. Apparently, I'm full of shit. And I've been known to be that. And that's okay. That is A-OK. Hate mail. You want to send me your hate mail? Please, by all means, do. Uncle Hack at DangerCats.tv with the subject line, Hate Mail. I will read it word for word. That's right. Get it off your chest. I know some things out there are pissing you off. I know things are upsetting you. Everybody's got something to bitch about. You know what I mean? I imagine that maybe that doctor wants to write in and get some things off her chest other than the semen of a paraplegic, you know? But that's what this show is designed for. You know, uh, uh, we see that journalists and uh, people from all around the world are constantly getting hate online. So direct it at me. Give it to me. And I'll read it here so I can hopefully make money off of it one day. But anyways, uh, our first is kind of a question, which was, I I honor the system because they were the first ones to write in about uh, me bitching about not getting any hate mail. So I will respect the fact that they wrote in and it's a female writer. Oh, we we don't normally get those around here now, do we? But uh, here we go. Hey, Uncle Hack. After seeing you in Calgary and listening to episode 116 fan question, I'm curious, what advice would you offer women in the dating world? They say, curiosity killed the cat. (laughs) Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's so silly. What a callback. (laughs) Take care, Sadie. Offer, uh, what advice would you offer women in the dating world? Well, first off, okay, now this is only applying uh, to those women. Now, I know I understand that not everybody acts like these women that they interview on these uh, street interviews and the ones that go viral are the most delusional females that you could possibly come across. And most people are like, you know, self-aware enough to know where they fall in line in the pecking order, right? Like myself, I know I'm not high up there. I know I'm not high up there. I'm not a sought after individual. Nobody looks at me and be like, I wonder what he fucks like. You know, I'm not gorgeous. I'm not ripped. I'm pale white, receding hairline. Uh, I get acne in my 30s. You know, I understand where I'm like mid-pack at best, mid-pack at best. And that's like, as the chart goes, you know, a lot of people are sitting mid-pack. So I'm a mid-pack guy. And then you get a little further down. It's like a hump, you know, it's like uh, flattening the curve. Remember when at the beginning of COVID, they were like, we got to flatten the curve. Yeah, well, the curve at the peak of it is where like mid-pack is. And there's a lot of people inside that uh, mid pack and I am one of them and I will happily admit that. So, you know, uh, I would say for women in the dating world is, uh, you know, uh, you've allowed, you've allowed too many corporations to come in and manipulate, um, what you should see as beauty. You know what I mean? Like a lot of, a lot of these like makeup companies, they got you convinced that you got to go get your lips plumped and then ass injections, fake tits. And then you got to go and put about $700 of fucking makeup on. When in reality, look at, uh, uh, look at, look at old quadriplegic. He would, he would have fucking took down anything. Look at, Take a look at that officer, okay? Like, we we spent a little time, and then we were like, whoa, we didn't expect her to be the whore, right? That's what I mean. We don't expect these things. You got to be, you got to, like, separate yourselves from the pack a little bit, you know? Rather be, you know, a lot of us aren't just walking around, and we're, we, we, yeah, dudes are horny. Of course we want to fuck. Of course we want to fuck, you know? But it's all the excess horse shit that, that we got to deal with. So if I go, wah, 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 you know what I mean? Like that. And so if I had dating advice, I'd say just fucking relax, will you? Relax, will you? Oh, man ain't shit these days. Well, yeah, well, have you looked in the mirror? Have you considered what you act like? You know, all these unreasonable things and expectations that you put in. See, here's the problem. It's like expectation list of dudes is just like, does your pu- is your pussy warm? Does it get wet? And can I play with it? Can I suck on your tit? You know, like these little things. Uh, cooking and all that shit, I think that's out the window. You know, that Andrew Tate stuff and people are like, hey, 
fucking, why are you in the kitchen, bitch? You know what I mean? You don't even have to be a good cook. Half of dudes aren't, you know, half of us dudes, and I'm talking about my my buddies and, and who I know inside my circle, aren't good cooks. So if you're even just remotely, even just slightly fucking better at cooking than we are, we already are like, holy fuck, she's a great cook. It could be awful. It could suck ass. We would never say fucking jack shit. We would never say jack shit. But you got all these other expectations that, you know, that you have in your head that that this is what they want. They want me. And then and then once you realize that uh, that isn't what they want, then you have this fucking stupid saying that, you know, well, we don't do it for you. We do it for us. No, you do it because it's like some sort of, it's like a corporation psyop that has you convinced that you need all these things to be attractive in the world. You know, it's funny. Everything that, 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 these cosmetic companies and these magazines. And now they're like being like, now they're convincing you that it's okay to be fat. You know, oh, oh, if he doesn't like you because you're fat, then he's fat phobic. You know, they're convincing you. You're so easily manipulated by magazines. Uh, magazines don't really make, uh, work anymore in this, but uh, back in the day, it used to be magazines. But now it's all these like fucking psyops that take place of like, it's okay to be fat. If you're fat, it's okay. It's okay. You like, you guys exist on this zero accountability and, and then like, and then wonder why you're lonely. So it's, so I'd say fucking, you know, it's a little bit of like lower your expectations and get your shit together. Like, like that's where dudes expectations are low and we kind of have our shit together. Kind of, you know, like, we're working, you know, some of us aren't good at money management. We like to go drinking and having, we like to invest in good times where you guys like to invest in like your, I don't know, your fucking cosmetic collection. I don't fucking know what you guys get up to. You also, uh, I don't know. No, no, that, that doesn't really apply here. I was going to go off on something like with like sex toys and, and, but I don't think it applies here that much. You know what I mean? Like you put uh, actually in a way, yes, it does. You put too much fucking, uh, too much investment into vibrators. I've noticed lately. Well, as long as I have a full charge battery, I don't need no man. Uh. Okay. Well, don't, then if that's the case, if you get robbed, you're on your own. Why don't you, why don't you go get a battery operated cop to go fucking arrest you? Why don't you, you know, like this is my Andrew Tate stuff that's coming out. This is my internalized misogyny because you had to write into my fucking show. And I'm a man of my word. And I said, like, I, I go in order. We go up the list, right? So, so curiosity killed your, the curiosity that killed your cat, the, the, the having no curiosity is, isn't, getting uh your cat killed if you know what i mean getting your cat pounded <laughs> that's gonna be the new laugh when i make a dumb joke so my advice to you or i'm curious what advice you would offer women in the dating world it's just like yeah but you guys come on and fucking you also treat like tinder different than dudes do right it's like a uh, it's like a dopamine hit to get matches from hot guys. And then like, you know, the hot guy is just like wanting to fuck you. And then there's like, if, where if you just like went down a tier instead of like basing everything off of looks and you just gave like maybe the, the six or a seven a shot and went out and had a good time with them, you'd realize like, oh, okay. You know, like I was just talking to some guy on the weekend and he was going off about, oh, his, uh, his old lady left him or some shit. <laughs> and, uh, but it, it, he, he was like upset. He spaghetti because he's like, oh, well, she was a 12, but uh, uh, going off. But she was a 12 and she cheated on me. And she was a 12. It sounds like she's a fucking two, you moron. It doesn't matter. Like, that's what I mean. We're so fascinated with like shiny objects. That you don't you don't see past the surface for like two seconds, probably awful and bad, you know. Zero personality, probably just boring as hell. So that, that's another thing. It's just like that, that. This doesn't even apply to women. It's just like people have become boring. You know, people have become boring. Not a danger cat show. Those those are like 
those are interesting people, you know. I like that I attract like people that uh, uh, don't necessarily follow rules. I like rule breakers. I like people that step outside the box, say fuck you. You know, I respect those types of people. But I'm talking in general, and I'm putting a bit of a umbrella over most folks. But you just fall in line. Nobody has a uh, any any like any sense of uh, they, they, nobody has a spine anymore to like voice their true opinions. They just sit, they just regurgitate what the television and the and the and the cell phone tells them, and then that's where we are today. Nobody's like unique enough as an individual. So that that's be unique. Go have fun and uh, enjoy yourself out there a little bit. Relax. Now that, uh, there you go. So now let's get into the actual hate mail. Okay. Hack, you fucking clown. Love it. <laughs> Love the show, but need a vent a bit here. You were in Fort Mac a while back and put on a great show where we met again after many years. First was years ago when you were pawn scum slugging whiskey shorts in Oil City Roadhouse then many times after in such fashion. Fuck you were a douche. <laughs> nice. But still loved your content and brand. Still do, motherfucker. Uh, you've become one hell of a comedian lately, but in the last few pots, you seem uh, to not be getting any better with your computer prep and setup. Get your shit together. I didn't subscribe to the Alberta Rattlesnake for dead air and beep boop beep boop. Gotta set this up. Beep boop beep boop. Get prepared. Get your dick ready to fuck. We want hard pounding shit. Uh, how? Uh, whoa. We want hard pounding shit splitting laughs from the man himself. If you can't figure it out, maybe ask some granola eating, mask wearing beep booper. How you can be as great as them dicks at podcasting. Anyways, enough of this email. Maybe more hate if you don't get your dick untucked, pussy. Get your ass back to Fort Mac. We need some goddamn creed, uh, crude humor. Thanks, Joe Mama. I believe that was Joe Mama. Well, that was very kind of you. You know, that's nice that uh, you took time out of your day and you wrote this for me. And uh, you, you, uh, <laughs> you dirty old dog, you. That's what I mean. You can, uh, you can, you can talk all the shit you want on here. Never mind. That was not Joe Mama. I don't know who wrote that one. All right. Let's, uh, moving on to the next piece of hate mail. Look at that. Look how kind I am. I'm even going over time. Usually these podcasts are only an hour, but because uh, I took a week off, I decided to go a little extra long. Three pieces of hate mail for you, okay? Dear Uncle Hack, I've got a bone to pick with airlines and strip clubs. Beautiful. Two th That's a love-hate if I've ever read. Myself and a friend of mine were recently involved in... Uh, uh, here we go. Let me just do this right here dear uncle hack i've got a bone to pick with the airlines and strip clubs myself and a friend of mine were recently involved in the pre-christmas fuckery with flights being canceled long story short we ended up having to drive 5600 kilometers each way to get home in time for christmas and not have to spend it uh sitting in a in an airport with hundreds of miserable fucking people and their screaming children. Good on you. We had a great time on the trip, but still wanted to give a big fuck you to Air Canada and WestJet. That uh, one on behalf of the people. Oh, okay. So driving almost uh, 12,000 kilometers was uh, the way to do it. I believe so. <laughs> Actually, road trips are a good time. Uh, I don't know who you, a friend of yours you said in the beginning. I, I, I don't see an issue with that. I, that sounds like a good time. Nothing like just fucking open roads, you know, a uh, 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 half a K, you know, maybe even a full case of Bud Light, a couple cigs, maybe you're chewing, maybe you're vaping. It don't matter as long as there's some sort of, some sort of substance in there. Shooting the shit, listening to the radio, have a nap, stop in some little butt fuck town, hit a diner. We all know that Sam Walker loves diners, right? 
Speaking of, we, uh, we're going to start a new little thing on the channel with Sam Walker where he's doing diner reviews. He loves diners on the road, absolutely loves them. And uh, we're going to review small town, you know, locally owned or locally operated at least uh, diners all across Canada. And uh, it's, yeah, it's going to be fun. But that's a, uh, that is a nice big fuck you to Air Canada. Not letting them get in the way of you having a, a good time, right? You know, I'm all about that. It's always about the silver lining. Well done. Secondly, on our drive, we cannonballed at home. Then on the way back, uh, we said, ah, fuck it. Let's stop for dinner along the way. To my surprise, in different in two different major cities across Canada, there is no dine-in at any strip clubs. Maybe I'm delusional, but I swear I've seen at the Rippers multiple times in the past and uh, I've seen at the Rippers multiple times in the past and had the surf and turf or something like that because why wouldn't you? What happened to the days of being able to stare at a set of titties while you scarf down a meal after a hard day's work? Is this just another good thing that the younger generation has fucked over for people who like to get out and live a little? Happy New Year's, cats. Joe Mama. There's Joe Mama. My apologies uh, for mistaking you for the person to, uh, prior. Um, you know, that is a good question. I don't know where it stopped and, and uh, how it began, but one thing is for certain that they did they are they're harder to come by especially here in canada i don't know where or when i recall uh uh it was diamonds here in edmonton and you used to be able to eat in the strip club i believe it came became a cost thing i don't think many people were coming in to eat at the strip club it was more so coming in for a good time or maybe the mess just wasn't there it just didn't seem feasible but i do agree with you what happened to the good old days when you go in for dinner and a show? Now it's just dinner. Now, 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 you know what I mean? Like you go into a fucking Earl's or, you know, the one place that I love more than ever, Boston fucking pizza, a bunch of reheated fucking deep fried chicken fingers, you know, drive me up the goddamn wall. Worst food on the goddamn planet, you know? What happened to, I agree with you. What happened? Why can't I, if I'm going to have horrible food, right? Let's, let's just say this. Let's just say Boston Pizza decided to remodel and uh, they start putting in uh, the local ballerinas down there at, at, at the strip club, right? Let's just say that they did that. It would increase my... Let's just say this. It would it would allow me to bypass the fact that their food fucking blows, right? I wouldn't be sitting there bitching about the food because I'm getting dinner in a show. You know, it's like when you go to Vegas and you, and you get that medieval times, right? You're not there for the food. It's dinner. It's show. It's experience. You go down. You got dancers. You got everything. Maybe... You know, let's bring it back and, and you can't eat there all night, right? Like maybe until about 10 o'clock. We'll have a little smorgasbord, right? We'll go down there and have a little smorgasbord down at the peelers. I don't see an issue with that one bit. I, In fact, you know what? Uh, it's like that movie. Uh, what's the one with Adam Sandler? And then he goes, uh, that's my boy. You remember when they're fucking having a little, I, I believe it's a little steak and eggs in the morning? Uh, or, or maybe it is even at, they, well, anyways, they go in for, you know, this place is known for the best steak and eggs. Why wouldn't that, you know, why wouldn't you? Even if it's just breakfast, breakfast is a great, great meal, right? And you went in and it's a peeler joint. It's a peeler joint. You know, we got, we got fucking, why the fuck? We can sit here and have a goddamn drag brunch right? That seemed to be feasible. Why the fuck aren't we allowing the ladies, the dancers of the evening, to fucking serve a little food, even if it's a little chicken wings, you know, even if it's pizza? It doesn't matter because it, I agree with you. What happened? What happened? Who, who fucked this up? Somebody's responsible for this. And I agree with you. For the people who like to get out and live a little. Amen. Amen. What happened to the people? 
this younger generation is fucked over for people who like to live a little. That's the thing. It's like the younger generation, it seems like, I get it. Inflation and all that's hitting us. And uh, we're not we're not exactly in a time where, where the dollar bill is thriving. And, uh, you know, you can't stretch a fucking dollar anymore. You go to the grocery store and they bend over and just fuck you dry. Not even with their cock. It's, it's with an unpeeled carrot. We just want to get out and live, you know? We need like a... We need like a fucking, a nice little, what, what, what were they, the, the, the booming 40s or whatever the fuck, the booming 50s? Who gives a shit when it is? The roaring 30s, roaring 40s, whatever the fuck they called it. We need that again. You know, they'd have little burlesque shows. Everybody would go out, drinks, you're in a booth, you're enjoying yourself. That's what I like. I like getting out. I like hanging with people. And, and this right here, I agree. So Stare at a set of titties while you scarf down a meal after a hard day's work. You know, some people just don't understand the, the the strip club. Why would you want to go to the strip club with your friend? Why not? Do you go to a movie with your friends? Do you go to any sort of entertainment with your friends? Do you enjoy yourself at, at these places? Of course you do. Of course you enjoy yourself. Living. Loving. Laughing. Feminist will, feminism will rise again and we will be able to eat Steak and eggs in a strip club once again. And I thank you for tuning in. I'm glad to be back. Uh, hopefully see some of you at uh, some live shows here in the near future. Like I said, DangerCatShop.com for all your tickets. Early episode available uh, every week. Patreon.com slash DangerCat69. Uh, you get this episode that you're listening to right now, 48 hours earlier than everybody else. Tuesday at 3 p.m. It will be released. Plus, you have an extra episode waiting for you on the Patreon right now. As it is, uh, wait, it is fucking right there. Whatever. Who gives a shit? Patreon.com slash DangerCat69. If you would love to support the show, you know, uh, it, it, it'd be greatly appreciated. If not, I can kindly go fuck myself and I'm a okay with that. Anyways, enjoy yourself out there. <laughs>